what's going on all right i'm outside the gym right now finishing my coffee some starbucks colombian all right before i get started before we get into i just want to briefly go over what we're going to be doing today because i'm switching it up a little bit like i talked about last week and i just don't want you to be like wait a minute you're always preaching specificity you're always talking about your favorite saying is to be a master of one not a jack of all or in this case a master of a few lifts and that's true, you know, but if you go back, like I was saying last week, if you go back and see when the videos I made a few months ago, I think it was titled Getting Bigger Versus Getting Stronger. I talk about how I take blocks where I do different styles of training. And one of the main reasons is because when you do just a few lifts and you're just constantly hitting these same lifts over and over, you run a higher risk of repetitive stress injuries. And that's what I'm suffering from now because I'm getting really sore elbows. I'm getting tendonitis in both my elbows. So... I'm gonna take a little break, but there's more benefits to it than just that. You know, there's also strength building benefits because if you think of it, like like I was saying last week, I was comparing a boxer to an MMA fighter and I was saying how I was talking about in reference to being a master of one instead of a jack of all. I was talking about how a boxer, since he's seven years old, all he does is throw punches every day. Every day, all he does is punch. So this movement pattern is so ingrained in him that he can't do it wrong. He could generate so much force and so much power in this movement because he has those mechanics down pat compared to an MMA fighter who doesn't even throw punches a quarter of the time he's training because he has so many things he's got to work on. And that, and you can see that in, um, like, you know, of course, the biggest example of that, you look at Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, where you, the, the power comparison in their punches was so extreme that you had a guy who was only known for defensive fighting who didn't take a step back or fight defensively the entire fight because he just wasn't scared of the other man's power. All he was doing was walking down a man who was 30 pounds bigger than him because he was not scared of his power. And you see the power difference where Floyd ended up stopping him. And Floyd does not stop people. He does not knock people out. The last time he knocked someone out before that was like five years before when he, you know, they say sucker punch Victor Ortiz. You could call it what you want to call it, whatever. He caught him off guard. But, yeah, and I mean, if you look at other boxers, the punches he's taken from other boxers, that famous one from Shane Mosley, where Shane Mosley caught him in the second round with that overhand right and rocked him so hard that Floyd buckled up and had to grab on. Or when Maidana caught him in the second fight, at the end of one of the rounds, he rocked him so hard, it looked like a tooth came flying out his face, and he was saved by the bell. Now, these guys are 30 pounds lighter than McGregor, but they hit... 100 times harder because look i mean people kept saying oh if mcgregor's mcgregor's too big floyd has a little head and i'm thinking of like skip bayless if mcgregor just catches on one time it's over with but it's not true because what they didn't understand is the power difference between a master of one to a jack of all mcgregor caught him with that left uppercut that popped floyd's head up Send it flying like one of those rock 'em sock 'em robots, but Floyd didn't even take a step backwards. Now McGregor's 30 pounds heavier than Mosley or Maidana, but his hardest punch didn't even slow this dude down. So, but that's a master of one compared to a jack of all. But there's also so now let me compare that and um see the carryover in the comparison to lifting. Because the thing is, there's also a downside to being a master of one. Let's take them out of the ring and let's put them into a street fight. Now, Floyd could be in a lot of trouble because he's a master of one, but McGregor got a whole bunch of tools in his toolbox that he can use. So, this is where, you know, there's downsides to only mastering certain lifts. Let's take me and put me into, um, it's summertime right now, it's beautiful outside. Let's put me in the pool with my wife and all the guys got their um, wives and their girls up on their shoulders and they're playing games in the pool. My wife, like, come on. And my wife kind of thick, you know, so maybe it's like, whoa, we're getting a little heavy here. Let's take a little break. And she could be like, well, wait a minute. I seen you doing videos of you. You do 400 pound squats. You do 500 pound deadlifts. What's the problem? Yeah, well, hold on. Let me put you in a fireman carry because I low bar squat. No, that's not going to work. You know, we don't want to put her in a fireman carry in a pool. You see what I'm saying? Just like how if you take Mayweather outside of the ring and you put him into a street fight, he got all types of problems on his hands. You take me out of the low bar squat and you put the weight into a different position. I got all types of problems on my hands. You put me into, when we're in real life, I can't adjust that weight. If you look at me in my squat videos, I spend all types of time in the setup trying to get it to the exact millimeter where I'm used to having it because I got that movement pattern built in that position, that exact position. But in real life, we can't put the weight into that exact position. So there is benefits to using other lifts. So today I'm gonna be in there doing the safety squat bar and I'm gonna look really weak. Is it that I'm weak? Well, in comparison to some of you guys on YouTube, yeah, I am weak. But it's not just really that. If you look at it like right now, write up a, a five-page letter with your left hand. It's not that your left hand muscles are weak. It's that you haven't built up those neural pathways. You don't got the movement pattern down to use your left hand efficiently like you do with your right hand. So there's benefits to training 
accessory lifts. I want to be a master of something. I want to be great on deadlifts. I want to be great on squats. But there, there's a lot of benefits to taking a block to train other lifts. And that's what we're going to be doing today. All right, this already went five minutes. If you fast forward through some of it, I don't blame you. All right, I'm going to finish this coffee. I'm talking kind of quick. I'm excited because I've been drinking this strong. Like I said, Starbucks, comment below. Let me know what your pre-workout is. Or do you believe in just going in there all natural and just loving lifting? I don't know. Before I get my coffee, I'm a little down. I'm a little sluggish. All right, let me cut this off and get in there and get to it. All right, me and my boy Steve was just talking about weightlifting belts. You know how they have their place, but there's also benefits to not using them. So if you haven't noticed, no belt right now also for this block of training I'm doing. And I know I'm significantly weaker without the belt. There was a video where I was doing a certain lift or whatever and I forgot my belt and you guys probably seen that too. All right, let me get to this. Let me stop procrastinating. Get to this set. Keep an eye on Steve in the background. He's gonna be going up to 400. <laughs>
Oh boy. <laughs> 